Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here today, and I'm going to be painting this um, ink and watercolour, or line and wash painting, um, of this really attractive um, Lake District English landscape. Um, I'm simplifying it from this photograph from Pixabay. I shall leave the link to the photo in the description below. Now, the simplification part of... Um, any painting is really important and it's a very personal thing. Each artist will probably select different things they think are important about the painting. Um, if I was painting this for myself, I'd probably include a few more elements, but because it's um, being done as a tutorial that hopefully is um, accessible to beginners as well as um, more advanced painters. I'm going to keep the elements very simple and very basic and using my pencil I'm going to lightly sketch them in and make sure that they're in the right places and in the right proportions before I begin with my waterproof fine liners. So I'm using um, a carpenter's pencil. I like to use that because it's a nice big chunky pencil with a big lead so a little bit like the reason that I use large brushes is because they keep me nice and loose when I'm painting. If I use a large pencil I can stay fairly loose when I'm drawing so I don't get bogged down by detail. Um, I just try and stick to the basic outlines and to simplify this scene, which has got quite a lot going on, um, I just want a nice, simple, beautiful blue sky with a few clouds, which I won't draw in. I shall leave that to the paint. Um, and then I'll keep my horizon line pretty much the same sort of shape as it is in the photograph. I shall include all of the buildings and the beautiful pine trees and that lovely gate over on the right and the path which I'll slightly change um, the curve of the path so that it leads the viewer into the painting a little bit more and all these things I shall just very lightly pencil in um, to make sure everything's working and then I can use an eraser to make any adjustments if I'm not happy with any of the elements before I decide to commit with the indelible waterproof fine liner. So I'm going to um, try and keep it really simple um, and I'm going to leave out the sheep but of course you can include them if you like um, because they're a lovely feature in this painting but to keep it nice and simple because um, animals can be a little bit tricky to get into a landscape but please feel free to add those if you prefer to have that if you give this painting a try. Today I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's a piece of quarter imperial size, which is 11 inches by 15 inches, or 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters. It's 100% cotton paper and it's a lovely paper. Um, apparently Saunders Waterford is one of the papers that, that once you wet it to paint wet in wet, it stays open wet and workable for about the longest of all the papers and I, I think it's a really lovely paper. Of course you can use any of your preferred paper for this and any size um, but I like to work on quarter imperial. I'm, I've got my, um, my paper which is 140 pounds or 300 GSM weight. I've got it taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. I don't pre-stretch my paper, I find it buckles a bit as I paint, but then as it dries naturally, it slowly flattens out till it's completely flat. You can see that I'm simply going over my pencil lines now with my fine liner, and I'm using a size F or fine, or I think it's a 0.5 um, Faber-Castell artist's pit pen. It's waterproof and it's filled with Indian ink and it's a lovely pen to use for ink and watercolour or line and wash. So 
So I hope you can see here why it's so important to keep the drawing simple um, when you first pencil it in, but to get it right, because then it's just a matter of going over your lines and outlining with the fine liner and not really adding too much more detail, maybe a little bit of scribble here and there to indicate tree canopies. Um, to thicken up some of the lines a little bit and give them a slightly heavier weight either by going over them and thickening them up with your fine fine liner or you can use a brush pen um, which is a really nice sort of gives you a nice easy thick line for some of the stronger shadows So now that I've um, finished my line work, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and just leave it for five minutes to make sure that everything's fully dry because then it will come, become completely waterproof. I've now got my board at an angle of about sort of 30 to 45 degrees and that means that gravity will help me paint when I paint my sky in first wet in wet. So I'm using a one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler brush or any large wash brush will do to wet the sky all over. And I'm going to cut around my farm buildings so that I can keep them a little bit paler. So if they're dry, they should resist the run, um, the gravity run of the wet in wet wash as the paper is at a slight slope. And then I can decide um, how much shadow I want to paint onto the buildings a little bit later when I see how things look. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue, a little bit of cobalt blue and a tiny bit of indigo. I'm just working around trying to just allow the white paper and the different shades of the paint to give me my sky painting around my little cloud areas. I don't want too many clouds because I want to keep the sky reasonably simple so that, um, so that the actual landscape itself dominates in this one. The sky is, is like the sort of backdrop for the landscape in this case. So painting straight through my trees. That means when I eventually put a little bit of foliage on, you'll still be able to see the sky through there. And you'll probably notice that I'm not putting in the sort of the sun and the sunburst through the trees that was in the photograph, which while was very attractive, was not a, an easy effect to achieve. Um, and I don't think it's necessary here. I think a nice plain cloudy blue sky will be enough. I'm just going to add a little bit slightly stronger blue across the top and in parts. And everything should soften and diffuse nicely. Um, as it dries naturally and hopefully give me quite a nice, very simple but realistic looking sky. So now for the landscape. To mix my um, beautiful sort of earthy English green tones, I'm using various mixtures of um, my blue, which is cobalt blue and ultramarine blue, with a little bit of cad yellow, lemon yellow, and a little bit of raw sienna, and maybe the odd bit of burnt sienna every now and again, just to darken it up. And I'm trying to um, cover most of the land using my directional brush strokes in the direction of the land, and trying to make sure that I leave enough um, unpainted paper at this stage to put in um, some paler, sort of more yellower greens so that I can have my bright sunlight showing through and then some slightly paler uh, greens but still keeping a nice variation in the hues across um, to give the sense of distance in the background. Those paler colours will help that land to recede a bit further back so that we get depth and distance and aerial perspective. I'm still using my Mottler brush, but you can use any brush if you prefer a round brush for this sort of work. But try and use the largest round or mop that you can get away with. Of course, you could use a Harky brush, um, a flat brush, any brush really, whatever you're comfortable with using for this sort of work. 
And now this is my brighter green. It's just had a little bit of lemon yellow added to it just to brighten it up a little bit across the centre of the page. And then I'll eventually get some shadows in there. You can see that I've avoided the path uh, because I'm going to put that in in a sort of a more neutral grey colour. Building up, um, just dipping back into my different shades of green just and maybe a little bit of burnt umber as well, just to put a bit of shadow here and there. Then softening the edges of the path back with a clean, damp squirrel mop. Then I'm going to mix up a nice neutral grey using my blues, my burnt sienna and my raw sienna till I get a nice grey colour. And then this is a three quarter inch flat brush and I'm just putting in my path, making sure that it's narrow in the distance by the gate and come, it comes out sort of wider um, towards the foreground um, to give us that sense of accurate perspective. And again, more depth and distance. And of course, all the time I'm painting, everything's slowly drying out, but it's still damp, it's still workable. And so this is a slightly richer, drier mix of um, burnt umber with a little bit of the green added to it. So I can just darken up where I've got grasses and, and clumps of um, reeds and brambles in the foreground and sort of darken up some of the shadows under the trees, along under the fence and below the farmhouse. Um, putting a little bit of variation into the hue, um, into the hills in the background. Not too much, but just enough, again, to give the illusion of distant trees growing off of that hillside. Be careful you don't go into your damp wash with a wetter brush than the, than, than the page. If you do that, you'll end up with cauliflowers and runbacks. So just dab the brush onto a paper towel or a sponge um, if you think it's too wet and keep the paint mixture nice and dry and everything will still soften and diffuse. And so those darks will become fully integrated with the wash and should look really natural. So now I'm going on to my buildings and I've mixed a nice grey again from my cobalt blue, raw sienna and burnt sienna. So nice grey on the roofs. And then working on the rest of the land, um, dipping into grey and um, the greenish brown uh, just to add more shadows and to just drop some shadows from the trees, from the pine trees, uh, following the slope of the hillside into the hillside um, so that I get those shadows sort of softening slightly into the grassy area because the grass here um, is quite long and overgrown. It's not a lawn, so um, I need to be able to sort of lose those shadows a little bit onto the land, but still have them sort of helping the composition and helping the painting to read correctly as a sort of a, a sloping hillside. This is quite a watery mix of ultramarine blue. It was a little bit too thick, so I've just removed a bit of it so that I can have that cottage gable end sort of standing out really nicely, uh, but still in shadow. And now um, really darkening up with a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to get a nice dark colour and so that I can drop my shadows in uh, just before I leave things to dry um, and so that the shadows themselves will diffuse and soften. A lot of my hard edges have already been created by the fine liner so when I'm painting a line and wash I'm not looking to get too many hard edges. Uh, maybe a bit of dry brush at the end once it's completely dry but as I say with the line work here um, that provides us with our hard edges so most of our washes need to be sort of lost and found and softly diffused. 
but just before it dries I can use the corner of a plastic card, my fingernail or a palette knife to scrape through the paint and reveal the white paper underneath and that gives me some nice sort of hard edge, stronger grasses in the foreground. I want to be careful not to overdo this but just to put a, a few of those in they will partially soften back but give me that nice little bright highlight um, in the foreground, again helping to lead the eye into and through the painting. So that's most of the painting finished. I'm going to leave it to dry completely. I want to add a glaze so it has to be bone dry so I'm going to leave it for a few hours. The glaze will just be very light glaze of lemon yellow which will brighten up the sunny patches on the ground. So here it is, it's dried back. I'm really pleased with the way it's looking. I just need to brighten up that, the sunshine on the grass a little bit more. So I've mixed up a watery mixture of lemon yellow and I'm just pulling it across um, the landscape, across the sort of center of the landscape on either side of the trees. So we get that nice bright sunlit look. This is something using a glaze that really helps to exploit the beauty, the tran transparent beauty of watercolour because we'll be able to see the green underneath still but this lemon yellow will just highlight certain parts and give them that sunlit look. We can do that on the distant hill as well, quite lightly and when that dries back as I say it should just add that beautiful bright layer so we can still see the greens and the browns underneath um, but should just give that sunlit look and just pull the painting together. The brush that I used there was a size 14 Escoda Perla synthetic round brush and now I'm just going to use a really small quarter inch um, Cotman flat brush and a little bit of cobalt blue to paint in um, a nice door on the barn. And then back to my three quarter inch flat brush and a little tiny bit of um, burnt sienna, um, you know, almost um, invisible touches of sort of this orangey brown um, on the chimney and just a few little touches here and there around the buildings, um, sort of a subtle way of drawing the eye as this sort of brick red colour uh, stands out and complements the green. And now the final thing is mixing up um, using my grey mixture and a very dry brush and carefully adding dry brush twigs um, at the end of these pine branches to give that really distinctive look. just sort of scratching away at the texture of the paper with the dry brush to create these marks. And you can see that straight away my trees are now looking a lot more three-dimensional, a lot more convincing, but still looking quite wintry. As this is um, a sort of late winter, early spring scene. Just adding a little bit more um, of an illusion of distant trees and bushes on that far slope. It's keeping it quite pale so it doesn't come forward too much, but just to add enough detail to sort of balance out the rest of the composition. And then finally, using my grey mixture um, to drag a bit of dry brush across the length of the path, uh, just to strengthen up the tone a bit in the foreground and along the path. And then um, another layer, just deepening the tone um, or hue on those roofs. 
and I'm happy with that. Um, I'm going to call that finished. So here it is with the tape removed. Um, that gives us a chance to look at it with fresh eyes and see if it needs any adjustments. But I think that's okay. I think that's still fresh, but it captures the scene as I sort of wanted it to look um, quite nicely. Um, and the line work, I think, is is effective here, but without being too dominating. I think it's the paint that's really the star here. Um, and that lovely, rugged Lake District landscape. So I hope that um, you enjoyed watching that and that it was useful and that you can take some of these sort of methods and ideas into your own uh, line and wash paintings. Of course, you can try this painting out and um, the line work will be available to download for my Patreon. So if you're interested in that, then follow the link below. But I think what would be more valuable would be to use some of these techniques and try them out in your own photographs or from your own sort of plein air sketches and try making a painting up from those um, using some of the sort of ideas from this demo. Because I'm really hoping that these demos are helping you to sort of um, build up and use the transferable skills that I'm trying to teach here, that you can then sort of freely paint your own um, chosen compositions with a bit of practice. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, as so that really helps us with our reach. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. We really appreciate you. So I'll see you again soon, and happy painting. Bye.